I love the applause just for coming on stage. I think that's representative of how excited we all are today to be back in person. This is amazing. So if you all could please stand for the PharmD and PhD class of 2022 and the PhD classes of 2021 and 2020.
Good afternoon, and everyone welcome to the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences commencement ceremony for the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. This may be the first time in nearly 130 year history of the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences that we have three cohorts or representatives from three cohorts available in, at the graduation ceremony at the exact same time. I'm Jennifer Robinson and I serve as the Associate Dean of Professional Education and I'm a professor in the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. I'm also an alumna of WSU. It's so great to be here in person with you today. I forgot how great it felt as we had students uh, who, this is the potentially last time that you're going to be students, process in and see their loved ones waving and shouting and hooping and hollering. I absolutely love it. This is a day that many of you have been waiting for and out of respect for this important occasion, I need to remind you that guests will not be allowed to enter the aisles during the academic procession. Professional photographers will photo photograph all candidates with their diploma covers. Parents and friends of the graduates are asked to remain in their seats during the ceremony and to refrain from standing in the aisles to take photographs or to take videos. But if you wanna take photographs or videos from your seat, feel free to do so. Also, I do need to ask you to silence your cell phone for the duration of the event. So we are grateful today that many people made this event happen, including our, our faculty, our staff, and our community. And they're with us here today to celebrate. So thank you for being here. I would now like to take this opportunity to set the stage for our ceremony today. Graduates, as you sit in front of me now, I'm reflecting upon the path that each and every one of you took to get here. While I may know part of your story, your peers, your loved ones, know the struggles and triumphs that you encountered along the way. Becoming a scientist or a healthcare provider or a healthcare provider who is a scientist that, that's not easy. It takes determination, sacrifice, lost sleep, and apparently a really healthy dose of caffeine. All of this work, even if that work was hard, is worth it. As you walk across the stage today, take a moment and reflect upon where you have come from and the people that you have helped along the way. When you leave this ceremony today, I want you to think about your future and what you are going to do to make this world around you a better place. I will leave you with this quote from Steve Jobs. I think if you do something and it turns out pretty good, then you should go and do something else just as wonderful. Just figure out what's next. Now it is my pleasure to introduce a very accomplished professor scientist, um, hobby winemaker, the wine's actually pretty good, and class of 1983 alumnus and dean of this college, Mark Lieb. Thank you, Jennifer. I, I, I think you have to achieve a certain age to understand the sinking feeling I felt when I realized I didn't have my reading glasses. <laughs> so I, I'm afraid Connie um, <laughs> can't really see what's written here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend I can anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, so thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, students, friends, family, uh, esteemed faculty, staff, uh, university administrators, in, particularly, in particular, I want to extend my gratitude to the representatives from Albertsons who are here with us today, Annie Stout, Jason Newmiller, Chris Greiner, and Olga Brophy, uh, who helped support this operation uh, year after year. So thank you very much, Albertsons. 
And, and I should say that Jason, Chris, and Olga are all alums of WSU. Unfortunately, Annie went to uh, Drake to get her pharmacy degree. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at WSU Health Sciences in Spokane, Dr. Gwen Hallis. And Washington State Pharmacy Association President Ryan Oftebro and CEO Jenny Arnold, who are on the stage with us here today. And finally, our keynote speaker, uh, who gave an exceptional talk earlier uh, this morning, uh, Scott Guyberson, who flew in from the East Coast specifically for this event. Scott is, uh, is, uh, is a former Assistant Surgeon General for the United States and pharmacist. Scott? So thanks to all of you as well for being here today in my two years in this, in this gig. Uh, I've experienced a virtual white coat ceremony, a drive through commencement last year, which wasn't much of a commencement at all, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but this is my first in-person WSU graduation since my own 39 years ago. And I, I have to admit, I didn't participate in my own 39 years ago. <laughs> But uh, that was because I thought I had to work. Uh, I was a graduate intern. I thought I had to work, and then the schedule got changed. But I, so I showed up in, in cutoffs and flip-flops, and that didn't seem like a really good idea to, to go across the stage without a gown. So I, I never did any of that. So this is the first time I've participated in a WSU graduation in my life. So uh, I, I think we can all agree it's great to be here in person. Um, and experience the true gravity of this occasion for our graduates. I want to share with you some statistics about the class, and I'm speaking uh, about the PharmD class now. The graduating class uh, totals 160 students across both campuses, Spokane and Yakima. The class is about 37% male and 63% female. It's been that way for like 30 years. Um, your average age, now I graduated from pharmacy school when I was 22, you're not PharmD, your average age is, a, is between 28 and 29 years old. About 62% of you are Washingtonians, and those of you who are not from Washington came from uh, states across the country, Alaska, Arizona, California, Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Indiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Missouri, Montana, North Carolina, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, Texas, and Wisconsin. <laughs> and, a, and some other countries as well that I won't go into. So the, the, the faculty and I are extremely proud of your achievements, your hard work and commitment uh, to patient care has prepared you to advance the profession of pharmacy and become creative leaders for collaborative health care in Washington and across the country. Whether you choose to practice in a community environment, a hospital setting, or non-traditional settings, or pursue postgraduate residencies or fellowships, you have acquired the professional skills and training, and you've developed the relationships that you need to make significant contributions to improving the health care and wellness in the populations you serve. The faculty and I are honored to have helped prepare you for this exciting next stage in your careers and we offer our heartiest congratulations and best wishes. I now want to recognize the faculty of the college. It's often said that the most important product of a university is its graduates, and I couldn't agree more. However, it's the quality of the faculty that, uh, that defines the stature and reputation of the university. A university is its faculty, not bricks and mortar. And I'm very privileged to work with a remarkable group of scholars and clinicians and educators who comprise the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. This distinguished group on stage with me today uh, typically brings in around $10 million in external research funding, and that funding allows them to conduct cutting-edge research at WSU and with collaborators around the world. 
These same faculty have provided the deep foundational science background and the broad clinical training that has prepared the class of 2022 to be leaders and to thrive in a rapidly changing healthcare landscape. Will the members of the faculty please stand and be recognized for their contributions? I would also like to recognize and offer my sincerest appreciation to the outstanding staff in the college who are with us today. The group of dedicated professionals works extremely hard to ensure student and faculty needs are continually met and that the college operates smoothly, including overseeing special events such as this special ceremony and the white coat ceremony you all took place in four years ago. Will all professional staff please stand or wave a hand to be recognized? I've said this all the time, you may be sick of hearing me say this, um, but I believe that, that, that student pharmacists and the profession of pharmacy have, been, have played an essential role in saving the planet from this horrible pandemic we've been experiencing for over two years. In the state of Washington, pharmacists uh, have administered two out of three of all COVID-19 vaccinations given. So if you do the math, that's about five million doses that pharmacists have been involved in. And I could not be prouder of you, student pharmacist, and the pharmacy profession in the state of Washington, and I couldn't be prouder to be a kook pharmacist as well. So um, you have given vaccinations that didn't just include the COVID, but you've also given flu shots, shingles, travel vaccines, and the whole nine yards. You, uh, along with pharmacists across the country, stayed on the front lines of the pandemic when most of our healthcare colleagues went remote. You stayed on the front lines even before there was a vaccination. And that's remarkable, and I'm, I'm so appreciative. <laughs> to our PhD candidates, past and present, I know several of you have not been able to see your families overseas for years, right? And that's been tough. Being a scientist can be a long, lonely road with isolation exacerbated by COVID-19 restrictions. Yet you and your mentors and your laboratories prevailed with your work to make breakthroughs in research, forging ahead to better the human condition. For both our PharmDs and PhD graduates, You've experienced uncertainty, isolation, several waves of COVID-19 variants, and countless other headwinds. The last few years have truly tested your resolve, and I commend you on not just surviving, but excelling in that environment. Congratulations. It's truly an honor to be here with you today in the, in the presence of what I consider to be in the flesh heroes, and as I said before, I couldn't be prouder of all of you. So congratulations on this momentous occasion. And uh, we're very pleased that everyone uh, is here to support the graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Lead. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, <clears throat> In the, from the 2022 graduating PhD class, candidate Tarana Arman.
Good afternoon, friends, faculty, and family. And congratulations to the 2022 graduates. So I will start this speech by telling you a little bit about myself. I am Tarana Arman, and I am from India. However, my name has Persian origins, where Tarana means song, and Arman means hope. So together, my name loosely translates to song of hope. Now, whoever is from India or who knows about India also knows that interreligious marriages are a big taboo there, even now. Yet, more than 30 years ago, my parents, two amazing people from two very different religions, got together and made the existence of my brother and me possible. And I'm so happy they are here somewhere present with us in this room. <laughs> then again, two years back, I, a girl from the, a comparatively rural part of Eastern India, married a city-bred guy from the western side of India, and now we are building a life together here in Seattle, Washington. So basically what I want to say is that my life has been an amalgamation of experiences and cultures, and I am extremely proud of it. So, as I was fidgeting anxiously, uh, thinking about the last five years while preparing for the speech, I thought it is only apt that uh, I speak about coming together and hope. And uh, it is amazing that after two years of virtual commencement ceremonies, where each one of us cheered for our friends through individual Zoom panels, we are all here today, gathered in this single room, walking together. And the cherry on the top, or rather I say the lilac on the top, <laughs> um, it is not uh, only the class of 2022, but the PhD classes of 2020 and 2021 are also walking with us today. So once again, to the PhD classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022, congratulations. <laughs> now, this in-person event would not have been possible had scientists from all parts of the world not come together to tackle this pandemic the vaccines against the virus that we all now are so thankful for itself are a result of coming together of previous knowledge about mRNA for vaccine and therapy and modern research tools. So one of the primary lessons that we all can learn from this mammoth task to overcome COVID-19 is that Science is not individual. Rather, science is collaborative, science is knowledge sharing, and science is forging new friendships. And these are all the things that I experienced in my five years here at Washington State University. Our PhD group has always been a very diverse group of people. It's amazing to see how people from multiple countries, multiple continents, and multiple languages came together and built this multicultural family. We all enjoyed our research in our own way. Some loved working during the early mornings. Some loved working into the late nights. Some were glued to their computer screens studying biological modeling. Some were pampering their micro-sized cells, or some were forever lost in the alleys of the vivarium, feeding their mice and rats. 
However, every moment we got, we came together, we relaxed, and we laughed. Our get-togethers often culminated into stories, songs, and some amazing food. I truly feel blessed that I have known each one of you and can call you my PhD family. Now, our professors. They are some of the most amazing people that I have met. Through their own grant deadlines, preparing for classes to teach, and their personal lives. They have not for one moment wavered from their responsibility towards us. Their bright radiating smiles or understanding nods during the Friday seminars, preliminary exams, or even the defense, and their compelling questions about my research all came together to make me into a confident researcher. So, all I want to say is that science can sometimes be isolating. Research gets tiresome. During every setback, I would remind myself that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. And there was. There was this blinding flash of light that filled me with exhilaration and whew, relief. But I will nev never forget my family, my friends, and my professors holding those tiny candles throughout the tunnel, making sure that I never lose my way. Now that all of us are moving ahead with our lives to do remarkable things, achieve more successes, and create an impact out there in the world, remember, when life gives you lemons, don't just make one single glass of lemonade. Rather, call up your family from Washington State University and have a lemonade party. <laughs> <laughs> we survived. We got through an extremely tiresome pandemic. We conquered. We did it. Go Cooks! Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you, Tarana. Our second speaker today is graduating PharmD candidate from the Spokane class of 2022, Krista Los Santos. Good afternoon, classmates, lifelong friends, and faculty, along with your friends and family, both in person and virtually, who are gathered here in this special moment today. I can't believe we're out here celebrating this together in person. I remember us sitting in HSB for drug development back in March of 2020. It was right before spring break, so you know we all couldn't wait to go home. <laughs> Little did we know that would be the last time we would all be together until today. So thank you to everyone who showed up and showed out. We did it. Four years ago, we began our pharmacy journey at this very place for our white coat ceremony. We were excited, scared, maybe even feeling imposter syndrome sitting next to our fellow peers. Some knew exactly what they wanted to accomplish in pharmacy school, while others were still trying to figure it out. However, during those next few years, which might now seem like a blur, we joined organizations and created families, took risks and became leaders, started internships and discovered different career paths. We built new friendships and even created families. Some of y'all even got engaged, married, and had a baby probably in the same year. <laughs> but then we adjusted to a new testing model then quickly transition to a virtual learning environment where half the time we're sitting there making sure that we're muted and our videos were off on Zoom because we didn't want anyone to see us with our first cup of coffee sitting in bed. <laughs> but finally, we went onto our appies, 
cried a lot, but then we discovered our passions and applied for postgraduate positions. We did this all while trying to make sense of the many other uncertainties of our world. Constant adaptation is what our class is all far too familiar with. Right now, we're in an important moment in history where our profession leaned in to uncertainty and played an integral role in responding to the challenges of the pandemic. We showed up to the front lines to vaccinate and administer tests in our community, whether it was picking up extra shifts at work or volunteering. We showed up to provide the latest updates on treatment and vaccine guidelines. We worked up our first COVID patient in the ICU and the ED and assisted intubating patients in the hospital. And to combat the era of misinformation, we used evidence-based medical literature to educate our patients, friends, and family about all things pandemic. No one could have prepared us to take on these new responsibilities as a student. Yet despite any apprehensions, we chose courage, rose to the occasion, and figured it out. Let us acknowledge that our resilience is not the only reason why we're here today. When we struggled on finding our career path, we turned to faculty, preceptors, and mentors for advice. When we experienced burnout, we turned to our friends and family for motivation. So, as we celebrate this achievement, know that this is a win for every person in this room and all those watching. Today we stand as a product of the successes we've had and the challenges we have overcome. I believe that with our interdisciplinary education, we are fully equipped and prepared for what is to come the next chapter of our careers. With the ever-growing progression of our profession, let us use our platform to improve healthcare delivery, especially in rural and low socioeconomic populations, so that we can address their inequities and improve patient lives. Lastly, let's just soak in this moment, but remember, this does not define us. Whether our next move is starting a new job, residency, or fellowship, know that we will continue to grow, make mistakes, and set new goals. Wherever our journey takes us, I hope that we continue to choose to show up, lean into change, and persevere in our passions. It has been an honor to stand as the student speaker on behalf of our incredible class. Thank you all, and congrats, class of 2022. Go Cougs! Thank you, Krista. Our third speaker today is graduating PharmD candidate from the Yakima class of 2022, Trevor Schultz. <laughs> Yakima fam, it's good to see you guys again. Reflecting uh, back on what Krista said, yeah, it's been a while since we saw each other and we had no idea. I miss you guys a ton. Some of my favorite memories from pharmacy school are uh, hanging out with you guys in between classes, playing Super Smash Brothers during lunch. You all know what I'm talking about. <sighs> I'm so happy to see all of our Spokane counterparts in person as well, finally. Some of us for the first time meeting in person. Um, I'm happy to see all friends and family here that turned out as well, both here and virtually. Hi, Mom. <laughs> wow, what a journey this has been. We're finally here. We finally made it. This is our moment, the beginning of the rest of our lives. You all need to give yourself a pat on the back uh, because you made it, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. We not only made it through pharmacy school, we made it through pharmacy school during a global pandemic. What a time to be a healthcare professional. Talk about resiliency. This will likely go down as one of the hardest times of our careers. Nothing can stand in the way of our goals and dreams now. We are unstoppable. WSU faculty, don't think we've forgotten about you either. What a substantial role you have all played into shaping us into the incredible human beings we are today. Thanks for everything. I know it wasn't easy for any of you either. I want to give a huge thanks as well to all the mentors, family, friends that helped us all become who we are today. We couldn't have done it without every single one of you. 
Finally, I would like to give a special thanks to my wonderful fiance, um, without whom I wouldn't be half the person I am today. I want to leave you all with words of wisdom. If we've learned anything during the pandemic, it's the importance of taking care of yourself and others. Everyone's mental limits have been pushed to the limit this past two years. Just remember to be kind to one another. You never know what your neighbor or patients, for that matter, are experiencing in their daily lives. Always strive to practice love, compassion, and empathy for our fellow human beings. We're all in this together. Especially important is being kind to yourself. Something I've been focusing on a lot lately is practicing positive self-talk. We're usually our own worst critics, and it's important to establish a positive narrative in your head. If you were able to go back in time and talk to yourself as a child, what would you say to them? If you are telling yourself something that you would never tell yourself as a child, why even give that thought at the time of day? Just remember, you're all amazing human beings. You made it. You deserve to be here. Thanks again to everyone. Best of luck to all of you in your future careers. I am so looking forward to calling all of you my trusted colleagues. Farmily for life. Go Cougs. Thank you, Trevor. And on behalf of the faculty, I just have to say, we have the best students ever. Agreed? Agreed. So we are honored today to have with us a very distinguished public health leader and pharmacy advocate. Admiral retired Scott Guyberson was formerly the Assistant U.S. Surgeon General and two-star admiral with the U.S. Public Health Service. He also served as the Acting Deputy Surgeon General of the United States in 2013 and 2014. Admiral Guyberson retired from active duty to, be, to become the president of AMI Expedition, I can never say this word, Expedition, I can't do it. I just, I can't, I'm gonna try one more time. Expeditionary, nope, not gonna happen, I'm moving on. Healthcare, he is well versed in the delivery of healthcare solutions under resourced and vulnerable populations and has successfully led organizations through global and domestic crises. Please join me in welcoming Admiral Guyberson. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Good afternoon, WSU. Distinguished guests, Dean Lee, faculty, family, friends, those joining us in the virtual space, and to you, the graduating classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022, it's an honor to be here. I, like everyone else, am thrilled to be in person. We should be all grateful. I was able to spend some time yesterday with your faculty, the dean, some of your student leadership, and some of the students uh, graduating today, and it is a true pleasure to be with them. This morning, I got to shake everyone's hand or do the appropriate fist bump, look them square in the eyes, and wish them best on their journey forward. As graduates listen to commencement remarks, many expect an inspiring talk that challenges you to go out and do wonderful things. That is what you should expect. However, this commencement and these remarks come at a particularly critical time in our nation's history. So while my intent is to inspire you, and believe me, I'll get there, we'll have to tread through a few serious issues first. Abraham Lincoln said, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. You have prepared academically for many years. And now the world is giving you that chance. A unique opportunity for healthcare professionals to change and shape the future of the nation. If you ask why I think this, let me explain. The public's health 
is and has been at the forefront of the nation for the last two decades, well beyond this global pandemic. The pandemic simply put an exclamation point on the first 20 years of the 21st century. You and your families have all experienced unprecedented surges of challenging events. The beginning of the century attacks on our own soil, September 11. A month later, in October of 2001, were the anthrax attacks. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and now Ukraine. Some of the most impactful hurricanes on record, Rita, Katrina, Andrew. You have grown up with uncommon public health crises like the opioid epidemic, mass shootings every month for a time, terrorist bombings. You have lived through record-setting epidemics and pandemics like SARS, MERS, Zika, Ebola, and now the great toll of the COVID pandemic. Currently, we have some of the highest prevalence of chronic disease ever recorded. We also have the highest rates of anxiety, depression, suicide, and overall stress in the last 100 years. This data, in my opinion, coincides with the most significant and insidious public health threat of our time, the social media platform and the negative impact it has on our population. It is certainly not by chance that this data coincides with the events mentioned and the environment we live in today. You have experienced an unfortunate polarization of politics and an unfortunate merger of politics and science, both directly and negatively impacting the public's health. Not all of these events started out as public health crises, but in the end, they have a tremendous impact on the health and the health behavior of our nation. This data and societal dynamics are sobering. I say this not to put a veil over today's celebratory day, but rather quite the opposite. It's to further define your opportunity and your ability to change the status quo. I've been through all these events and crises. They've affected me personally, as a father, as a husband, as a friend, and professionally. I have deployed to just about every one of these crises. And in some cases, I've even had the chance to help lead the nation's response. However, given the lens you have had throughout these crises and the resilience you have built to persevere, you are now the agents of change. The overwhelming impacts across the last two decades have seeded your opportunity if you choose to embrace it. Do not underestimate the pulpit you have been given as a scientist or a healthcare professional to catalyze change. According to a Forbes study in 2018, pharmacists, nurses, and physicians all ranked in the top three most trusted professions nationally, regardless of what profession. And that was before the pandemic. I think it's pretty safe to say that after the pandemic, given the care you've provided, that trust has only grown. If you think about the majority of the issues the nation has faced in the last decade, you can see that an erosion of trust has made the problems more pronounced. Trustworthiness, combined with your communication skills, the competencies you developed at WSU, your accessibility to the public and your ethos to help others can be used to strengthen bonds with individuals and communities. You are graduating as the gatekeepers of the nation's health. This is why you are so essential for change. Don't take that responsibility lightly. What you have been through since the turn of this century gives you an advantage 
to help reshape the world in a way that nobody else can do, in a way that creates a legacy for your generation, a legacy for your generation. That chance does not come often. In the 1920s, my grandfather migrated from the U.S. to Italy, or from Italy to the U.S. He came by himself on a boat from New York. Between New York, he was 17 years old. He had no job. He had no friends. He had nowhere to go. He experienced the Great Depression as a young man. He survived flu epidemics that killed many of his friends. He fought in World War II and lived a long and prosperous life. He was a member of what we call the greatest generation. The members of the greatest generation didn't get their name during those events. They acquired their name afterwards. They earned it. What they taught us in the decades following helped shape our nation. Their work ethic, humility, resilience, adaptability to change. Most, if not all, 2022 graduates and your families have lived through diversity and frequency of challenges in the first two decades of this century that are eerily similar to those of our greatest generation. Also similar, I believe what you do next will set you apart from all other generations. You have matured in an age of technology, the iPhone, the communication freeway. However, I ask you to be bold and innovative in your approach to health and health behavior. You are prepared. And like your school's vision states, if you remember your school's vision, you can advance, protect, and promote the nation's health. You can change it for the better, just like our first greatest generation. My charge to you is threefold. First, I ask you to guide health behavior. Use your intellect, academic training, and compassion to challenge the status quo and the norms and help support people as they cope with the challenges. However, if you don't exemplify what you ask of your patients, why would you expect them to let you follow, to let you lead them or support them? Second, do your absolute very best to prioritize science in your approach. Filter through the noise that our society often creates. You have the ability and the competency to do that. Don't allow your personal opinions, which you are still entitled to, cloud your professional judgment. It is our duty as licensed healthcare providers. Lastly, and although it sounds easy to do, it's probably the most difficult, be trustworthy. You have all seen how the erosion of trust, as mentioned, can negatively impact your patients and the nation's health. Trust is the foundation of relationships, and relationships govern the world. I have seen firsthand a lack of trust destroy individuals and organizations. At the same time, I've seen high levels of trust foster anything from a healthy workplace to the well-being of a nation. What I am about to say now is about as sincere as it gets. It affects me, it affects everyone behind me, you, your families, and the next generation. I have placed a responsibility and charge on you, but because of what you have been through and the fact that you are here today gives me no pause. Prove to all of us that your talents go well beyond a white coat or scrubs and a stethoscope. Do a better job than we have done to change our health trajectory and develop new and better ways to deal and be resilient. Your chance has come. Prove what I hope and believe that you are the next greatest generation. It's time to unleash all of you to help us come together and shape a healthier nation. To the graduating classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022, stay strong, stay healthy, and congratulations once again.
Go Cougs. Thank you so much for that thoughtful and inspiring message. And also, not being too upset with me that I can't figure out how to say the name of the company that you currently lead. Uh, now, before we begin the conferral of degrees, I'd like to thank Albertson's Companies again for sponsoring this commencement. Graduates, Albertson's representatives will be handing you a small gift as you leave the stage. And now, we are ready for the conferral of degrees. <laughs> Presenting the 2022 candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degrees in Pharmaceutical Sciences and Molecular Medicine, Interim Chair of our Pharmaceutical Sciences Department, Dr. K. Meyer. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. I have to tell you, it's just wonderful to look out on a sea of such happy faces today. Will the candidates for class of 2022 graduate degrees in pharmaceutical sciences and molecular medicine please stand? Dean Lead, I take pleasure in presenting the candidates for the PhD in Pharmaceutical Sciences and Molecular Medicine. Will the candidates please come forward? Tirana Arman. <laughs> Tirana's dissertation is titled Microcystin LR Hepatic and Renal Toxicity in Non Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease. <laughs> Philip Wibisono. Philip's dissertation is titled The Role of Neuromedin U Receptor 1 in Regulating Distinct Innate Immune Responses to Different Pathogens in C. elegans. <laughs> Shamema Nasrin. Shamema's dissertation is titled Potential Interactions of Cannabinoids and Their Metabolites on Major Drug Metabolizing Enzymes, Implication on Co-Use of Tobacco and Cannabis. <laughs> Irina Teslenko. Irina's dissertation is titled Role of Glutathionylation in Exomestane Metabolism and Efficacy. <laughs> now I would like to present to you previous year's PhD graduates who were unable to walk the last two years due to COVID restrictions. Will the candidates for the class of 2020 and 2021 Doctor of Philosophy degrees in Pharmaceutical Sciences and Molecular Medicine please stand? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Konchak's dissertation is titled Role of Circadian Clock and Sex-Related Mechanisms in Melano Mel Melanoma Genesis and Therapeutic Applications. Samyadeep Sarkar. <laughs> Sam's dissertation is titled Dynamic Interaction Between Circadian Clock and Melanocyte Biology. Xinya Dong. Xinwei's research dissertation is titled Design and Engineering of Nanoparticle-Based Drug Delivery Systems for Improved Therapy of Ischemic Stroke and Glioma. <laughs> Mohamed al Haq. Maha's dissertation is titled, The Role of Guanylate Binding Protein 5 in the Pathogenesis of Rheumatic Disease. <laughs> Yadira Perez Paramo. Yadira's dissertation is titled, Pharmacogenetics of Nicotine Metabolism, Implications in Nicotine Addiction. Presenting the 2022 Doctor of Pharmacy graduating class, Professor and Pharmacotherapy Department Chair, Dr. John White. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Uh, I'm not sure whether I should wear my reading glasses after seeing the dean up here, but I think I'm going to wear mine. <laughs> Maybe that means I'm older than him. Will the candidates from the Doctor of Pharmacy class of 2022 please stand? pleasure to present to you the candidates for the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. As the graduates come through the line, those who have completed the College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences Honors Research Program will be named as graduating with honors. So at this time, will the first row of candidates come forward and the rest of you may have a seat. Jacqueline Ujjan. Oh. oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ederlina Aguinaldo. Jacqueline Ajin. Again, thank 
<laughs> Thank you. Rina Ajapama. Rini Ajapama. Abdulali Amadi. Arsanos Balaman. Alanda Barash. Kyle Barsness. Jasmine Baskaroon. Rachel Bautista. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Juliana Boshain. Hannah Bokai. <laughs> Robert Castro. Zachary Coleman. <laughs> K 
Kylie Collins. Christopher DeBusman. Alyssa DeGrief. <laughs> Michelle Delblaski. Brandon Doe. <laughs> Moon Doe. San Du. <laughs> Nor Dolan. Azinma Ejimanugwo. Jermaine Esquivel. <laughs> Thomas Fanoma. Graduating with honors, Sabrina Fisher. <laughs> Ch 
Shane Fontes. Paula Gazala. Sarah Gubbermichael. <laughs> Seth Gibbons. Caitlin Grimley. <laughs> Robin Hart. Chandressa Hassani. <laughs> Molly Heron. Emily Hitt. <laughs> Keelan Hovred. Christy Huynh. <laughs> Jenny Huang.
Joseph James. Rosalind Johnson. <laughs> Spencer Johnson. Anderson Jolly. <laughs> Molly Carlson. Samantha Collinan. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Puneet Carr. Susan Kim. Catherine Canuthia. <laughs> Holly Knopf. Lisa Lai. <laughs> Chris.
Krista Los Santos. Madia Lashgari. <laughs> Who Wen Lay? Jenna LaCates. <laughs> Brian Lee. One sock, Lee. <laughs> Kayla Leland. Brianna Lemke. <laughs> Kayla Lemelin. Crystal Lewis. <laughs> Chase Littlefield. George Liu.
Karina Lucas Fernandez. Lynn Liu. Kevin Lee. <laughs> Nicole McCartney. Sarah Mahoka. Aurori Milliard. Graduating with honors, Madison Motzner. Graduating with honors, Siavash Naji Talakar. Graduating with honors, Jasmine Wynn. <laughs> Mandy Wynn. Amber Olson. <laughs> 
Sophia Owens. Brian Pananis. <laughs> Nithi Patel. Shannon Patterson. Jennifer Pelzel. <laughs> Jessica Penny. Janice Poe. Allison Ponson. <laughs> Jaime Ramirez. Jocelyn Robles Mendoza. Jace Rogers. Yeah. 
Arthur Sargent. Kentaro Sato. <laughs> Elizabeth Satterwhite. Erica Sue. <laughs> Julia Shaw. Rahel Seema. <laughs> Jashan Preet Singh. Fatumata Singatha. <laughs> Jessica Slusars. Colton Sorensen. <laughs> Kevin Stewart. Graduating with honors, Daniel Sun. <laughs> K. 
Carmen Thong. Me Van Tran. <laughs> Polly True. Stephen Tong. <laughs> Krishna Bhagasiya. Stephanie Vien. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Judy Vin. Hannah Way. <laughs> Hunter White. Bemnet Weldeslasi. <laughs> Cole Wren. Caroline Yu. Claire Yu.
Arazu Zafari. Aisha Zeb. Now for the Yakima class. Erisvedi Alvarez. Nicholas Anderson. Arlene Castro. Logan Cathro. <laughs> Derek Chai. Tyler Davick. Jackie Din. Romeo Doe. <laughs> Isabel Esquivel. Troy Fairchild.
Johanna Habitam. Adam Henry. Max Horowitz. <laughs> Aska Javed. Casey Johnston. <laughs> Ashley Ledgerwood. Doibu Mareep. <laughs> Yenny Wynn. Kwesan Iris Pan. <laughs> Trevor Schultz. Sukhbir Singh. <laughs> Yuan Su. Graduating with honors, Laramie Uang.
Martin Valdez. Krista Van Nostern. <laughs> Nock Twin Van. Joshua Wangadi. <laughs> Michelle Watson. Brian Wu. <laughs> Idris Zalmai. I know, awkward pauses, so bad. Just a second, we'll get going again. And now we have a couple of special guests to administer the oath of a pharmacist to our Doctor of Pharmacy candidates. Washington State Pharmacy Association President Brian Ofterbro and Washington State Pharmacy Association CEO Jenny Arnold. Will the Washington State University Doctor of Pharmacy Class of 2022 please stand? Please see the oath of a pharmacist inside your diploma covers or find it on the last page of your commencement program. 
it is a long-standing tradition that the oath of a pharmacist is administered at commencement to graduating Doctor of Pharmacy candidates. Doctor of Pharmacy candidates and the pharmacists in attendance, please raise your right hand and read out loud with us. I promise, I promise to, to devote, devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the through profession, profession of pharmacy. pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. I will promote inclusion, embrace diversity, and advocate for justice to advance health equity. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for all patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the responsibility to improve my professional knowledge, expertise, and self-awareness. I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles of our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will, I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists. I take these vows voluntarily and with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. You can be seated. Congratulations, graduates. You have invested so much to be here, but you're not finished. This is just the beginning, a beginning of a profession of taking care of people and continuous learning. We hope that you continue to invest in yourselves and your profession by finding an association, whether it's an alumni association, a local, state, or regional association, that you can continue to engage with, to be connected with peers, to continue your learning, and to build those relationships and foster those relationships that really matter over the lifetime of a profession. So congratulations. As a, as a thank you and to get you started, WSPA is giving you all free membership for the upcoming year. So we hope that you will join us at the WSPA. And congratulations, well done. Thank you, Jenny. Go and go Cubs! Yeah, that was great. Two Huskies saying go Cougs. <laughs> well, will all our graduates please stand? Upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the statutes of the state of Washington, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been recommended with all its privileges and obligations. Congratulations. You can sit back down. Yeah, we're not, we're not done yet. We've got a bunch more to, not just, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so these ceremonies wouldn't be complete without paying tribute to those who have helped you to make it to this day. And if you remember back to your white coat ceremony, I'm going to say exactly the same thing that someone told you then. And so this, these words bookend your time with us. Will all of the parents spouses, children, companions, supporting friends of the class of 2022, please stand so we can acknowledge you for the support you gave our students. That was fantastic. 
Thank you very much. So before we adjourn today, I want to welcome all graduates to the faculty of the WSU College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences alumni. I sincerely hope that the college will remain an important part of who you are, both professionally and personally. We hope to see you often at continuing education seminars, professional meetings, or at the College for Alumni or Homecoming event. Please don't hesitate to contact, contact me directly or send us a note to include in the alumni news section of the CougarX newsletter or update your contact information. I encourage all of you to take the opportunity to share your accomplishments, big and small, with us. And I'd like to invite Dr. Robinson back to the stage. Will the audience who are able please stand and remain standing at your seat? New graduates as well. <laughs> that concludes our ceremony, and I'm going to ask everybody to remain at their seats until our new graduates have left the auditorium. And since I want to extend a thank you to everyone that was here today, and the way that we always like to close big events at Washington State University. Go Cougs.